Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can put cloud motion into an intro video just using some stills. So you don't have to do a time lapse, you don't have to do any special video. It's something also known as the Parallax 2.5D effect. And to give you an idea what I'm talking about, here's a little sample. So this is done with nothing more than just two images. And it's something that you can use for an intro to a virtual tour or some other real estate photography video. And you don't have to take the time to sit there for a half hour, an hour to uh, try to get some time-lapse footage. You can just do it with a simple sky swap using Photoshop also using then the motion area of Photoshop. It's a very simple technique. If you've never used motion before, some of this may get a little overwhelming for you, but it's pretty simple. A little bit of practice, you'll be able to get it down pat, especially if you have any experience at all using Photoshop. You ready to take a look and see how this is done? Let's get started. So we're gonna pick up from our last tutorial. This is the image that we used in the exposure blending. Um, and that's where we got that even exposure without using HDR, get a very well lit house, even though it was backlit. Anyways, this was a prime example to use. We're also then gonna add in these clouds. Now this may look like an awful looking picture. And I picked this for a reason so that we can do some special adjustments to show you how to blend this and make this work doing that time-lapse video for this, okay? So first things first, what we want to do is go into motion. So up here, there's that little drop down in Photoshop. It's always got essentials if you're used to working with just standard Photoshop. And let's then pick motion. That gives us a timeline and a few other tools to be able to then use more video processing. Now we can do just like anything else in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and just fit that in a zoom where I can see both of these. I'm going to start a new file. And this new file that I'm going to start, it's going to be a Photoshop file. I'm going to use, excuse me, 1920 by 1080. It's the typical uh, widescreen uh, view. Uh, YouTube uses this common. Uh, so I'm going to use 16-bit RGB color. Background doesn't really matter. It's 300 DPI. I'm going to go ahead and create that. Now, I need to create a timeline. So I just click this thing that says Create Video Timeline. And now I've got a black background on this timeline. And let's say we'll stretch that out to about 20 seconds. That's going to be like, let's say, a 20-second introduction, kind of a long introduction. But we might do other things with it later. So anyways, we'll zoom in. Some of the things we could do is adding some text, a few credits, things like that going into it if we needed to. So now that we've got that timeline, we need to bring in our uh, layer that's going to work as our base, which is going to be the house. So we just go Control-A. Control C to select that. Now you could drag it in, whatever you'd like to do, but here I just went ahead and selected it all and copied it, and I'm just going to paste it in here. I'm going to zoom out and then resize it to fit in there. And there's a number of ways to do this. You don't have to do it necessarily this way. You could add media, you could drag and drop things. What I want to do though here is I want to make sure that the house shows mostly sky, the picture shows mostly sky, I should say. So that's where I'd like to have it for this particular example. That way we can see a lot more sky since we went to a wide view. Make sure on this and all the layers we're going to add that they're extended all the way across the timeline. All you do is you, you grab the end of it and drag it over. Now let's go ahead and call this base so we can keep track of what we're doing. Now I want to duplicate this layer. So I'll go Control J to duplicate it. I'm going to once again make that layer the entire length of the timeline and we'll call him top. That way we can keep these separate. Now on top what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask and then like a, a reverse kind of sky swap we're going to get rid of the sky out of him. So layer mask and then reveal all. I'm going to go down here to base to make sure that I don't do anything else on top. He's always going to be base. He won't be touched at all. And I'm going to go ahead and select the various colors, just like we would for any other sky swap. So I'm going to go to a Select Color Range. And with the dropper, I'll click Inside the Sky. I'm going to add the plus dropper, 
and click around other areas of the sky until I see that the sky down here in this white is all white. And that's all then selected, so I know the sky is selected. Now it's selecting more than the sky, but that's all right for now. And you can adjust the, the fuzziness to whatever you feel would be comfortable. Usually if you select enough colors, around 20 is a good uh, place on the fuzziness. Click OK. It selected a lot more than what I wanted, so to make sure that we don't get these other things, I'm going to select the Quick Selection tool. And I can either click on the minus little icon here, or I like to just go back and forth with the Alt key. So I'm just going to press Alt and select around the areas that I don't want to have included. Okay, so this is typical to do in any other sky swap. I'm just making sure that the sky is selected, and that's really all. Okay. Now that we've got that selected, I'm going to go ahead and feather that. Select Modify Feather by, let's say, one pixel. I'm going to go back up to top, and I'm going to hit Delete. Now, it may not look like anything happened, but if we turn off the base layer, you can see what it did. It re got rid of a lot of that sky. Now, there's still a little bit in here, and that's why we have a base layer underneath for the next step of what we're going to do. First, deselect that. Now go to your base layer and add in your sky. So I'm going to go to our sky shot and I'm going to go ahead and copy all that and I'm going to paste it in here. Now I need to make sure that this is sized properly but it's not sized like you might think. What we want to do is size it so that it actually overlaps some. So first thing I'm going to have it go all the way to this side and I'll show you why here in a second and I'm going to bring it out about that far. And if I start moving this like the clouds would move, I want to make sure that there is no other motion going on. So no other uh, mountains would be moving, anything like that. Okay. So just moving myself around here on zoom and with the move tool, or I could even use the size tool also and move it, see where I am. And let's see, that looks good. I'm not getting mountains, and I like where those clouds are. Now, I need the clouds to start someplace and end someplace. So I can also extend that a little bit, resize it. Let's say that looks good right about there. Okay. Once again, this layer 2 has to be the, inside, the entire length of the timeline. And of course, we'll just call him Sky. And you don't have to name these. I'm just doing this for the tutorial, so we can keep track of them better. Now, like any other sky swap, we have to blend it. But in this case, we blend it by brushing in some of top. So we take a brush at about 20% flow, and then we just brush like across these mountaintops, across the top of the house. And that gives us a nice blend. Now what you can do is you can adjust the sky layer to whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm going to add a few adjustment layers with clipping masks. I'm going to go layer adjustment layer and let's say I'm going to use a levels layer. Add a clipping mask by selecting this guy here and then I'm going to darken that a little bit. This will darken those blues. Maybe lighten up the clouds a little bit. That'll brighten it uh, somewhat. If I want to saturate it, the same thing. Layer adjustment layer, but this time saturation layer. And I add that clipping mask once again and that clipping mask makes sure that it's only affecting the first visible layer below it. So let's up that saturation a little bit and that looks about good for what we want. Okay, so once we're happy with how that layer is going to look, now we have to go to our sky layer and do something unique. On the sky layer, you can select it here in the timeline or over here. We want to turn it into a smart object. So you right click on it and convert to smart object. If you had dragged it in, you wouldn't need to do that, but since we copy and pasted it, it wasn't a smart object by default. Now go ahead and open the sky layer over here on the left, and now you'll see a transform option. So with the timeline all the way over to the left, select transform. Now move that slider all the way to the end of our video. And now we want to show the end of the sky. So we're going to go ahead and move the sky by selecting our move tool. Hold down shift so we can move it appropriately and we're going to move it to its end which would be there. Okay. Now that we've got that, we just move our slider back and you can see the clouds are moving. If we hit play, we can start seeing that the clouds are moving across there. Of course, this won't look as accurate because this is just a little preview in uh, Photoshop, but to see what it looks like done, we have to render it. 
So all that you do, like any other video, is you go to File, Export, and then Render Video. Once you're done rendering that video, it will take a little while, but in the end, it will look like this. So all that was needed was just your standard exterior shot, and you did a sky swap, but you made that sky actually move. Now, another thing you can do is since, remember, it was resized, that sky could be also then, instead of just moving it, you could also expand it. You could make it bigger. You could make it smaller, so make the clouds look like they're moving, but moving away or towards you, depending on if you zoom uh, or if you uh, then start condensing it. Depending on how you size it, you can then change the amount of motion into it. And once you have this, you can use it for, like I said, intros to uh, real estate photography videos, some of your virtual tours. Uh, it's something that my clients really like. It's a pretty easy thing to do, and it saves a lot more time than setting up a camera and doing it a complete time lapse and hoping that you're gonna have clouds also that will work to your favor for doing this. Anyways, I hope you like this tutorial and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.